Hi my lovely Frosty fam, it's me Karen Frost here at Now Decadence bringing you another video. This one is a little bit different from my usual. I'm doing an IBX treatment on my daughter's nails. I was unwell for a couple of weeks so I wasn't able to remove her um, acrylic, she had an acrylic overlay on. And so I explained to her how to do it herself to remove it. Unfortunately, she overfiled her natural nails. So I'm going to do my best to try and repair them for her. Um, which is what IBX, where, where IBX comes in. IBX is a wonderful invention. It actually penetrates the nail and binds the layers together and, and repairs damage. It's, it's, if you look it up, you'll see, it's really, really good stuff. It's not cheap by any means, but it's, it's really good. So I'm not only doing the repair, I'm doing the um, restore as well as the repair on her nails because she did overfile it, like I said. She does still have a little bit of product on some of the nails, so you will see me removing some of that. But for now, I'm just doing the usual nail prep because with IBX, you do have to prepare the nails the same as you would if you were doing any kind of overlay or extension. So first thing was to push back those cuticles and then I'm going to go around that cuticle area with my e-file of a very small cuticle bit and go in one direction on one half of the nails and then I will flip it in reverse and then go around the other side of the nail. There we go, see, flip it in reverse go along the other side so all I'm doing is an IBX and just a plain one color gel polish over the top my daughter is the complete opposite to me I I'm I'm outlandish <laughs> I'll pack everything and anything onto the nails for myself she however likes it very simple very plain she rarely has any designs now and again she'll have some crystals she she likes it completely simple and and just very well it's basic <laughs> there's no way to say it but that's her personal preference she just doesn't like busy nails it's not it's not her cup of tea so yeah like i said it's just going to be just a straight up plain gel polish no design and i totally forgot to take some photos so i don't have any <laughs> So anyway, you'll see it as, as the video goes along. So as I have removed the cuticle from the nail plate, the dead cuticle from the nail plate, you saw me just use my cuticle nippers very quickly there. She had a couple of hangnails. Um, I will not trim the cuticles unless absolutely necessary. So if there's a bit of cuticle that's sort of hanging off and, or, or in my way, or if there's a hangnail, those things I will use my nippers and just cut them off very carefully of course you don't want to cut your client and you only want to cut off skin that's that's dead that doesn't have blood flow to it um, I prefer not to cut the eponychium or proximal nail fold I don't yeah I don't feel it's necessary you can do the Russian manicure with you know just e-file bits instead of cutting as well if you want um, yeah, personally, I just don't. I, if, if this, the proximal nail fold or the eponychium was really uh, large and had loads of heavy, thick skin that I needed to lift off the nail plate and it would just be, you know, up in the air and sticking up and look all gross, that I would cut off. But like I said, you only cut what does not have blood flow so you don't cut any pink areas the white areas only is what you are safe to cut anywho so as you saw prepared the cuticle area uh, cut off any bits like I said with my nippers and now I'm just going to shape her free edges I'm using my SPD London file it's, it's a 
nice softish file for the natural nail so I will be shaping her nails you will notice that some of her nails are shorter than the others she didn't want me to even them out she wanted to keep the length of the longer ones um, that was what she wanted so that is what I did I would have preferred to even them up and make them all the same length but she didn't want it so yeah just a notation there because not everybody puts the sound on when they watch videos so I put a little notation on the screen just in case because I don't want people to be putting in the comments they're all different lengths what kind of manicure is this yeah well it's personal preference and what the client wants the client gets yes it's my daughter but still you know you treat her the same as you were a client and that's what she wanted so that's what she got so I will just very I mean I'm literally just tidying up that free edge I'm not filing much off at all because like I said she wanted to keep as much length as possible because she was growing her nails bless her and they had been doing really well well, after she removed the product um, yeah that's when she broke a few unfortunately but her nails really did need doing again I just wasn't well enough at the time to do it for her but we will fix them they'll be fine and they are fine now this was filmed a while ago so yeah her nails are doing really good the IBX treatments they do the job um, you can uh, put IBX every time on, on a client if you wanted to you don't have to but obviously you can it's yeah it's just a good product so if you're doing like soak coughs every time it would be a good idea to then do an IBX treatment at least once a month kind of thing to just keep your clients nails strong but yeah there's um Obviously, it's going to add time to your service, but it's also an upcharge. So you do, you would charge for the IBX treatment on top of whatever manicure style they were getting, whether it's extensions, overlays, or just the gel polish. Regardless, you still have to charge for the IBX. So yeah, I'm just going to use my sanding band to etch the rest of the nail. Well, it's not really etching. I'm just removing the shine. You don't really have to heavily etch nails anymore. Products stick a lot better than they used to back in the day. Um, yeah, products have come a long way since back then where you really had to etch the nails loads. You don't have to do that anymore. And where you see me uh, going in quite a lot, I'm removing any lifting. And there, like I said, there is some products still left in certain places on some nails. So I'm just removing that. I'm trying to be very careful so that I don't thin out her natural nail anymore because, yeah. There is some damage and we don't want to thin them out any more than they already are but it is important to get the rest of that product off i mean <clears throat> excuse me and just even up the surface of the nail it doesn't matter if there's you know the tiniest amount still on that hasn't lifted that's fine it doesn't you know it's not going to kill anybody and if it's blended in you can't really notice it once you've gel polished kind of thing so yeah I will just carry on removing all of the lifted bits and if I notice any um, any cuticle anywhere I will obviously remove that as well if I've missed any bits with my little uh, cuticle bit. I've got this speed on my e-file very very low it's only on a I think it was a three or a four um, yeah very low speed because we are not trying to thin that nail plate anymore on certain parts where there's acrylic I would turn it up you see where I have my hand just goes out of frame that's where I just turn it up to maybe five or six to remove the product a bit quicker um, and then when I get back when I move on to the next nail I'll turn it back down to a slower speed if there's no acrylic on it there we go, turning it to a slow speed so that I can finish removing the, the, moving the shine from the natural nail and just blending the rest of it in, making sure it's as even as, as I can get it kind of thing. At the end of the day, once the gel polish is on, we do want it to look even, so carry on doing this part. You can see where I've that nail had 
no acrylic on it it was very just very quick pass over with the sanding band because like I said they just don't want to be thinning out those natural nails any further than they already have done. Almost there. So I'm showing you both hands because you know some people like to see both hands being done so it's a bit of a longer video because you know like I said showing you both hands and because it's an IBX treatment as well as a gel polish it kind of extends the time and I'm I wasn't in a particular hurry with my daughter obviously so I don't try and rush when I'm doing her nails so this is a heating lamp bulb and this is the Cinetize that goes with the IBX system so I've turned my bulb on this is a warming bulb. You, it's like for reptile tanks and stuff, but it's perfect for giving heat, gentle heat to the IBX treatments because they need heat to penetrate the nail. So here we go. I will go in with my first coat. Like I said, you don't have to use uh, the strengthen as well as the repair, but because of the she has done a fair amount of damage um, that's why I'm using it first of all so I will apply that very thinly and evenly do not flood it the cuticles or side walls with this keep it off the skin as usual with any nail product you want to keep it off the skin so just a thin layer of that get your client to do the claw kind of maneuver with their hand and then put their hand underneath the lamp so that it heat gives it gentle heat for two to four minutes. Then you can just use a clean, dry, lint-free wipe to blot gently, remove the excess, and then the hand goes into the lamp for 60 seconds so under the LED lamp 60 seconds so now I'm going to do the other hand I got some on her side wall there so I removed that straight away like I said try and keep it off the skin as much as possible avoid touching the skin if you do remove it straight away um, I normally have the heating bulb on a stand but I'm holding it in this video just to show you the kind of distance it needs to be from the nails so that you are getting the heat. And if you notice, um, I also put my thumb and my fingers around her hand so that I could feel the heat too. That way I knew that it wasn't going to burn her because obviously it, you don't want it to be too hot it just has to be gentle heat if you've got it on a stand it's easier for your client to just put their hand underneath it and keep it at that distance kind of thing and you know you you can angle it over their fingers kind of, so yeah but like I said I was just showing you on the screen so it's not on the stand so I've cured that hand and the other hand is in the lamp so now I've cleansed with the Cinetize with a lint free wipe of course and now I am applying the IBX Repair this is wonderful stuff like I said I'm doing both the strengthen and repair because of the damage most people can just get away with just doing the repair but yeah it's it's wonderful invention if you um, go on to the IBX website you'll see the what's it called the history of the science of it kind of thing they explain it really well how it works how it penetrates the nail plate what it does kind of thing I did the course because you do actually have to be qualified to use IBX so I did the IBX course obviously I passed so I got my certification so I'm qualified for IBX treatments 
do need to be qualified to use it because obviously it's professional products. So again, I applied heat, then blotted, then cured in the lamp and then used sanitize to remove any residue because not all of it will penetrate the nail. Um, that's why you only use it in fit very thin layers. You don't want to put loads on. I always mess up that little finger for some reason. And then, yeah, then we can move on to the gel polish part. You can put two layers on if you want. However, because I'd done, I had already applied the first treatment, I didn't want to put another two layers of repair on it didn't need it because I'd already put the strength on them but you can if depending on the damage I mean you need to assess the nails which is why you need to take the course so that you understand what you're looking for um, once you work when, once you've assessed the nails you'll know which products you need to use and how many layers etc so it's a pretty straightforward system but you do really need to do the course to learn about it properly. I had um, a live course uh, with the owner and educator. It was wonderful to be speaking in real time, <clears throat> excuse me, so I could ask questions and stuff. That was really cool. And yeah, I, I did my little exam and passed, which was awesome. So yeah definitely worth doing because look at her nails now I mean they look so much better so much better it's wonderful stuff it really is worth having as a nail tech it's another treatment that you, it's worth having and like I said you upcharge for it of course it is a treatment in and of itself so you could just put a nail polish just a clear nail polish over the top of it and manicure done kind of thing as a separate service but or you can add it on to your gel polish or enhancement services as yeah as needed but it's definitely an upcharge for sure the products are expensive and obviously then there's your time so now i'm going to do the gel polish so i will treat the tr ibx treated nails the same as i would natural nails obviously i've already done all the prep and stuff but now i'm going to dehydrate then i'm going to put on an acid free primer very carefully again this is not something you want on the skin i can be a bit more slack with a dehydrator because it's mostly rubbing alcohol so it's not going to cause any problems but with primer you definitely want to avoid the skin entirely don't get it on the skin at all and if acid free is better for use with gel products um i've seen questions a lot about primers which primer to use with which products definitely if it's a gel product acid free is better if you need it at all some in some cases you you can get away with no primer my daughter has quite sweaty hands, so dehydrating in primer was an essential for her, otherwise she will get lifting. So what I'm doing at the moment is applying a rubber base coat. And because of the damage of her nail, and their nails are slightly uneven, I did add some, it's not a thick, thick layer, but it's, not too thin either it's kind of in the middle so i'm putting a decent amount but not too much because with with the base coat you don't actually want a load of it on but just it's hard to explain it's when you're doing it you'll you'll know what i mean it's not a thin layer but it's not a thick layer it's your happy medium kind of thing just evening out the surface of the nail but also being your primer uh, base layer it's going to adhere to your primer which is adhered to your nail plate and it, they're all going to just bond really nicely together and it's a nice surface to then gel polish over which is going to be flawless in you know with your 
if you've applied your base coat nicely your application of your gel polish will look flawless it will just look really good so take time with your base coat and apply it really really well because like I said the gel polish color will follow the, the base coat it just it's the way gel works so butt it up really you see how I bounce that brush up by the cuticle area but I'm not touching the skin just bounce it up as close to it as you can get and bring the brush down so now I'm putting the second layer of base coat on as you can see like I said you don't want it to be too thick because base coat can heat spike and that especially on nails that have been thinned out like my daughters they are then particularly sensitive to heat spikes be very careful about how much base coat you're putting on if necessary um, a lot of LED lamps have the low heat mode you can use that to ensure that your client doesn't get a heat spike but yeah if they have damage to their nail plate especially then they are more likely to feel the heat spike because the nails are so thin so yeah do your happy medium not too thick but not too thin just even out that surface they look so much better already and just that second layer is going to give her just a little bit more strength to make up for the layers of nail that are no longer there <laughs> but I mean obviously the IBX has added a lot of strength already and protection because that's that's exactly what it's for is for repairing the nail so it's just a bit more insurance for the longevity and strength of her nail that I'm putting on extra layer of base coat and like I mentioned already it gives it a very even nice surface for you to then gel polish over there we go so cure that for 60 seconds and now I will go to you go on to use the gel polish color she chose this nude which is a very lovely nude it's very neutral pretty shade so again bounce that brush up by the cuticle area drag the rest of the polish down the nail be careful around the side walls in the cuticle try not to touch the skin but if it does touch the skin do remember to use a small cleanup brush and some rubbing alcohol to remove it from the skin before you cure it never leave that on the skin because that will cause lifting so you see when I first used the brush I put it in the middle of the nail and brush some of the gel polish on then I go towards the cuticle area and bounce it towards there to get that nice and neat the reason I do that is because if you go straight from the bottle to the cuticle area you're going to have quite a lot of gel polish on your brush which is then more likely to flood the cuticle area and the side walls so to avoid that if you use if you apply some of the gel polish in the middle of the nail first of all then go in by the cuticle area you're removing by that time you've removed the a lot of the gel polish off so by the time you you bounce it by the cuticle area you don't have too much on your brush so you're less likely to cause a mess but if you do and you've got shaky hands like me like I said, clean up brush is your best friend. This is the cheapest of cheap brush and I've had it for ages and it is still going strong because it's synthetic. It's not affected by the alcohol in any way. It's just, yeah, it's wicked. <laughs> Rubbing alcohol, clean up brush and a lint free wipe to wipe off the brush. You do need to clean the brush in between. You'll see I dab it and wipe it on that. Uh, lint free wipe in between after every swipe because you don't want to be putting the gel polish back on the skin once you've cleaned it off so definitely keep cleaning your brush most important so I that whilst that hand goes in the lamp I will then apply the gel polish to the other hand again you'll see how I apply my polish 
you don't want too much on your brush apply it's better to apply your gel polish in two thin layers than to do one big thick layer you want it to cure thoroughly all the way and you don't want it to wrinkle some some gel polishes if you apply it too thickly they can wrinkle in the lamp when they're curing and it's it looks awful you and you can't leave it like that you'd have to remove it and start again because it would look horrible um but yeah so be careful with your application as best you can my hands shake so badly uh it's like it's not it's not easy for me hence the clean up brush and rubbing alcohol my best friends <laughs> Because she's got a bit of fluff on her free edge. I hate that. Where does the fluff come from? Drives me nutty. Absolutely drives me bonkers when this the fluff just appears from nowhere. It just ugh, it's so annoying. <laughs> so here we go. Clean up brush, bit of rubbing alcohol again. Tidy up. This is how this is the you know the secret to really really neat nails is the clean up brush it's your it's your best friend if you do not have one you must have extremely steady hands <laughs> i i need my brushes and my rubbing alcohol for clean up for sure there you go just make sure it's not on the skin i'm just evening out the surface because i can i've noticed it's starting to pull at the free edge making it thicker so I'm just even it and evening it out by brushing over it to remove the excess that has like I said pulled at the edge and now I will apply the second layer again first brush the gel polish in the middle of the nail then I can bounce up by the cuticle area and then bring it down this each side and down the middle and cover the entire nail that way there we go, down one side, bounce the cuticle to the other side, cap the free edge. You'll notice I didn't cap the free edge on the first coat, I never do. I always cap on the second coat. That helps to avoid chipping. Some people don't cap and don't experience chipping. I've done it before as well and I've not experienced chipping, but because her nails are quite short I did want to cap that free edge to just give it a bit of extra insurance so if you try and get it nice and neat if you can't there's your brush with the RB alcohol I know I sound like a scratch record but I have a lot of new subscribers and a lot of newbies and I want to make sure I'm giving them as much information as possible and tips and tricks that I've learnt along the way that they will hopefully find useful to know. So whilst that hand goes in the lamp I will carry on with the other one. It, it goes faster when you're working on someone else than when you're working on yourself because obviously when you're working on yourself you've got downtime because once one hand's in the lamp you can't do anything else. So once you're working on someone else, it is much easier to just rotate. So I do have two lamps to make sure that they're not crossing their arms over and stuff because, yeah, that's that's awkward and it's not comfortable for the client. And also that's when accidents can happen where they'll, where they'll brush their nails against something whilst they're trying to get into the lamp if there's only one and it's not in the middle kind of thing so I have one lamp either side of my rest where she's resting her hand that, that's lifted up it's raised up off the desk so her hands kind of hang down you always you, you always want gravity to help you so if that nails are pointing downwards that is not going to run into the cuticle area but like I said it can pull at the free edge so keep an eye on that and if you see it pooling then definitely use your brush to swipe the nails and remove any excess because you don't want it to be super thick at the free edge so now it's time to top it off and keep it tough it's not that exciting she has requested matte so 
they're going to be matte once they've cured with just a nice decent layer of that and if I see any dips in the nail if you watch what I'm doing I've got a bit more of the uh, matte top coat on the brush and you see I run it down the center of the nail like a little bead of it down the center of the nail to just even out the surface and give it a nice curve it also gives it that tiny bit more strength as well look there we go little bead on the brush and I just just use it like I would build her in a bottle kind of thing just even out that surface of the nail make sure it's got a nice curve to it and then there's no dips there we go so that's why I'm doing one nail at a time otherwise because I'm adding that extra bit of extra bead should I say of the top coat if I had just done all the nails in one go it would have it would slide off and end up all in the cuticles and the sidewalls and I don't want to do that so that's why I'm doing one hand on what one finger on each hand and, and alternating so that I'm still I don't have any downtime but I know that the top coat's not going to be able to run anywhere it's going to stay where I put it on the nail because obviously I'm being specific about where I need it to even out the surface and I want it to stay there so yeah just curing it straight away make sure that it does stay where I want it to and not run off the nail everywhere and make a right mess clean up any that has got in the sidewall just make sure it's not on the skin in the lamp cure it in place stops it from moving like I said and yeah that's it rinse and repeat so we are very close to the end of the video so I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you ever so much for coming to my channel and watching this video I appreciate you spending some of your most precious time with me it's uh, it's it's really nice thank you <laughs> If you have not already done so, um, you're most welcome to subscribe and join the Frosty fam. They are awesome. Channel is growing bit by bit. I'm getting new subscribers, yeah, every day, which is mad, but yeah, it's pretty awesome. So yeah, feel free to subscribe. If you have found this video helpful or liked it in any way, shape or form, please do click that like button. It's really quite important for my channel because it lets me know that you're enjoying the content, but also lets me get into that algorithm so that more people can see my videos in the recommendations. And if you are feeling up to it you are more than welcome to leave me a comment i am very happy to talk to you so that is all i have for this video this time peeps so you take care now and i will speak to you all again very very soon take care bye for now
Can get you off my mind. Someday soon, I'm gonna make it.